Hello, welcome to the Access to Justice for Families Foundation. We had did a podcast in episode two talking about bundles and documents to go within the bundle. So we felt it would be really helpful for litigants in person or anybody representing themselves in court to comprehend how to put together a witness statement and show you how to do it. So here it is. We're doing a screen share. So thank you for joining. Feel free to like, share with your network. Knowledge is power. And it does state within the civil procedure rules and family procedure rules practice directions of how to do a template, a witness statement template. And we shall put the link to the justice website with the right practice direction for you to have a look at. And also you have this visual as well. So to begin with, <clears throat> we're just using Word. So this is available to anybody that has an access to a, a computer, whether you have one at home, whether it's a laptop or a desktop, or you have access to the library, every single person that can get access to a computer and Word will be able to produce this document completely free of charge. And yes, knowledge is, knowledge is power. So let's start with the first document, the first page of how we're going to produce this. We're just highlighting it here for you. So there is a set format that the courts do like to see. And as litigants in persons, we like to ensure we are using the correct procedures and standing within the law when we're presenting our case to give ourselves the fair opportunity to a hearing, which is our Article 6 European Convention on Human Rights, constitutional human rights in itself. The, the word is in the, um, the right is in with, within the word. So Article 6, the rights to a fair hearing and trial are our human rights within the European Convention on Human Rights. So this is how we're going to produce it. As you can see here, the first part of the first page of the witness statement is you want to be stating where the matter is being heard. So you can see that we've put this in bold. So the standard font that courts like to see is Arial. So you can choose multiple fonts. I personally like to use Georgia, but the courts do like to use Arial. Um, Times, Times New Roman is very popular as well. So these really are like the three main fonts that the courts will think is acceptable. But if you're a beginner, and this is all very, very new to you, just stick to Arial or Times New Roman, you'll be absolutely fine. So once you've got your font, the preferred type size, and this is defined within the civil procedure rules, practice directions, and the family procedure rules, practice directions, is font size 12. So definitely choose 12. The next part of the format is going to be the line spacing. So if we just scroll down here, you can see that the wording is spaced quite far apart. <clears throat> and the reason that this happens is because the judges like to be able to read um, with ease and with simplicity. And by making sure that the documents that are submitted to court are evenly spaced helps facilitate this. So this is a really, really powerful trick um, and tip to use. So to get the spacing, you're going to go in your Word document and it's under line and paragraph spacing. Click the arrow and you want 1.5. That is the standardized course preference on line spacing. And just to give you an example of what it looks like without the spacing, I can take it to one. You can see here on the screen share, that it's very tightly packed together. So we just want to use 1.5 to open the spacing out in between each sentence. So there we go on the formatting. So the first line on your document in capitals 
is where is the matter being heard? So if it's in family, you're going to say in the family court of, it could be Cardiff, we can change it to Manchester here. And if you don't know where to find this information, if you have a court order, the court order format will be very, very similar to this on the front. So if you look in the top left-hand corner at the top of the court order, it's going to say in the family court of the place of where the matter is being heard. Or if it's a civil matter, it's going to say in the court of and in the place it's, it's being heard. So you just want to repeat that on the first line there and make sure it's bold and in capital letters. So you can either use your caps lock or if you wanted to, you can use this button here, change case, do the drop down and you can switch the sentence to um, sentence case or lowercase, uppercase or capitalize each word. So for this particular document, we want everything in uppercase. So once you've done that, you know where the matter is going to be heard. We then go on to the case number. So let's just do an example here. You can see on the screen share, we just use our space bar or you can use the tab button and you can put case number. If you want to write number, you can, but because of the amount of characters restricted to one line, it's just easier to put case, NO, and then type your case number accordingly. Your case number will be on a court order or any documentation that you've had from the court or any solicitors or barristers that you're dealing with in your matter. So just repeat the case number there, double check it, make sure it's correct, and there you are with your case number. Now, once you've done your case number, we're going to hit the space bar and I've just switched on the, you don't need to do this in your document. I'm just using it for you to see spacing. So everything in blue is where I've hit the enter key to drop down onto the next um, line. So that's all I'm using it for, but you, you don't need to use this when you're typing if you don't want to. So we hit enter. And then in this section here, I'll just take this off for a moment. This is, the next line is the law that your matter is including. So again, if you want this information, it should be on the court order. If you have any court orders to refer to, it should be in any legal um, instruction letters that you've received. It should be on any applications that you've received. It should be on any documentation from the courts, ideally. It doesn't always happen, but ideally, when they're first writing to you, they'll say, is the family law matter um, using the Children Act 1989 or the Matrimonial Causes Act 1973? Somewhere on the court order, usually at the top left-hand side, it's going to say what law your matter sits under. And that's what we want to repeat here. So in this case, in this example, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, they are under the Children Act, again, in capitals. And we're just going to write that straight under on the left-hand side of our document. Okay, so we're going to hit enter again twice. And we want to bring the cursor from the left-hand side into the middle. So to do this, you're going to come up here and you want center text. So click that and it's jumped from the left into the center. And this is where we start with the applicant's name. So the applicant is the person bringing the application to court. So that could be you, or you could be the respondent, the person receiving the application and having to respond to it. So in some cases, this could be where the local authority are bringing the application. So you'd see the local authorities details there. Or it could be um, yourself that's bringing the application. 
So if it's yourself, you're going to put your name in here, like so. I'm just using an example. And then you make sure that's in bold and in capitals. And then you hit the enter button. And then we now need to create this part here. So once you're in the center, you're going to go back up and hit align to the right. So if you click that button, it takes the cursor over to the right. So it's very simple. And now we need an open bracket. So on most keyboards, it's shift nine. And then just type the word applicant. And then to close bracket it, it's shift button and zero at the same time. And that creates a closed bracket for you there. Hit enter. We now need to bring it back to the middle. The cursor's back to the middle. So we go back up and do center a line, and then you can start typing a V. So this V stands for versus. So you've got the applicant here, versus the, the respondent, Mr. Joe Smith. So let me just take this one out here because that was an example. So to get the V, we do center a line again, as I said before, capital V for versus press enter and then you're going to type the respondent's name hit enter again we need to go to the right so we do align to the right button open bracket shift nine respondent close bracket shift zero then enter again and that's how it's going to start to look. So let me just take out this here. Because I was just using those as examples. Tidy this up for you. So then you just do the same for the respondent. So you've typed the respondent's name. You've hit the right line. You've got the respondent there. Hit enter again. And we need to be back into the middle to create this line here. So to create this line where you can see here, all you're going to do is press the shift key and the under line button, which should be next to the zero. It's just two lines on the button key. You just keep holding that and it'll create the line for you. So once you've got that line, move this up here we're then going to start typing this section here so to do that we want central <clears throat> alignment center text and then this is going to be the name of the hearing so it could be a first hearing or it could be a further directions hearing so this is where you would put that there and if you want to know where this information will be, it will be on the notice of hearing to say this date, there's going to be this hearing. It should tell you whether it's a first directions or a further directions hearing, or it will be on a court order where directions have been given for the next hearing. The, the name of the hearing will be on a court order or notice of a hearing letter. And that's what you're just going to repeat here. So once you have that, you then want to put the judge's name. There may be some cases where you won't know the judge's name. So the way to find out is send a very polite email to the court saying um, something to the effect of, please could you update me as who the judge is going to be for this matter on this day at this time so I know who to address. And then you should be able to have the judge's name. So in this example, it's going to be District Judge Jones. And the hearing is at 10 p.m. On the, we're going to put the date. So we could put Thursday, the 1st of December. Oh, it's done it lowercase for me. December 2023. 
And then we name this document witness statement of applicant or witness statement of the respondent, if you're the respondent. And then just do the line again, which is shift key um, underscore, and it will create it for you. Hit enter and give yourself a round of applause because you've just been able to draft the front page of your witness statement, which is fantastic. It's really, really helpful. And with this format, if it's a case summary document, if it's a skeleton argument document, if it's a position statement or witness statement, you use the same format and all you're going to do is change this section here. So you could put position statement of applicant, for example, or if it's a case summary document, you can just put case summary in there for the bundle. So once you know this template, it's like riding a bike, you just will keep using it over and over again. The only thing that you would double check is the court is still the same court, the case numbers are still case number. If the law changes, so they switch you out of the Children Act into another act, you need to just double check it there. Um, and obviously if you need to add parties because the children get appointed a guardian, if it's in the um, family, family court. So if you do that, if you have two applicants or two respondents, all you'd need to do is just add it in. So we could do local authority A in here, drop it down, and they will also be second respondent. And then we just change this one to first respondent. So that's how you can just keep adding it as your case progresses. It's quite simple. But once you've got this template, um, save it as a whatever template is going to be. So in this case, it's a witness statement template. Applicant. So save this as a template. And then for each time that you have to do this, you can click save as and save as a new document. So witness statement for hearing on the first or witness statement for hearing on the 10th. And then just always keep this as a template as your go-to place to create your documents. So I hope that makes sense. Now we're gonna move on to the body of a witness statement. And again, this is standard formatting. I have put the link in the description box with the practice directions if you just want to have a quick look. But with the witness statement, you always start it with I is going to be your full name and of your address and followed with will, st will state as follows. And then a double colon and then you can go into personally, um, we use subheadings, which you can see here, which are really helpful for the court because otherwise if it's just lots and lots of content and lots of paragraphs, it needs to be broken up a bit. So you can do subheadings. To do a subheading, again, capital letters, you can just write background of parties or just background of relationship. If you're trying to get some context, just to bring the judge up to speed as to why you're in court. So just keep it short, sweet, and to the point. You can do that. So you just would type it out and then bold, underline it. Uh, moving forward, we want to then start numbering, which I've done here in this document, I want to start using numbers. So where your cursor is, you're going to go all the way up here and we're going to see how it says numbering, do the drop down, and we're just going to use standard number alignment to the left. Let's just take my bold off. Let me just do that again so you can see how it look. We take bold underline off, numbering up here, and you see how it's produced number one. So I could put both 
parties met in late summer of 2000. And eight. So you just want to be very factual here. And the next one, it'll be number two and so forth. So you can see I've given a little example here and we can add a bit more. Um, Joe and Jane. Um, divorced in 2023. Yep, so we're here just building the background of the relationship. So this is really helpful. Then we're going to do another subheading, which is the main issues before the court. And again, you'll be able to pull this information off the most recent court order that you've been in receipt of, or if it's your first time going into court, it's the main issues you want to present to the court, but mainly what the court order suggests that stick to the court order that stay within the rules and the parameters of what the court's instructing and whether you're defending it or you're pushing the narrative either way it works you want to address the main issues as swiftly and as concisely and as simply as simple as possible before the court because time is of the essence so you can see in the example here point number four the main issues before the court today are as follows. One, being conduct, and um, two, being who the child will live with. So that's just short and sweet, main issues before the court. And then if you want to elaborate, um, you can end this section with what you're asking the courts to do today. So you can say the applicant is seeking an order that child arrangements be shared. Okay, 50, 50. So you always want to finish your main issues with what are you asking the court to do today? That needs to be your, sen your finishing sentence in this subheading, main issues before the court. What are you asking the court to do? And then this document would go multiple pages, I'm sure. But the last statement you want to have on your witness statement is a statement of truth. And it needs to be in alignment with the practice direction for witness statements and civil procedure practice directions and family procedure um, rules practice directions. Link is in the box. So we've just finished this off. You can literally take this as verbatim because we've taken this from the justice website of what they asked for in a statement of truth. And the only thing you change is your name there. If you're representing yourself as a litigant in person, so you'd say, I, your name, believe that the facts stated in this, and then you change this out here. This is going to be a witness statement. If you're going to do a skeleton argument, you change it to skeleton argument. So you say, um, the facts stated in this witness statement are true, full stop. I understand the proceedings of for contempt of court may be brought against anyone who makes or causes to be made a false statement in a document verified by a statement of truth without an honest belief in its truth. And then what you want to do is go to a line to the right, hit the enter button a couple of times, and you want to put your name, so we're going to put Jane Smith, leave a space for your signature and it needs to be a wet ink signature. So leave a couple of spaces by hitting the enter button and we want to put the date here. So we'll put the date accordingly there. So your signature goes in there. There is a, an electronic way to do this. I will do a video of how to enter a electronic signature if you do an electronic bundle, but this is mainly for litigants in person where it's their first time doing a witness statement and having the template of doing a witness statement, doing the format that is accepted by the court, that is in alignment with the civil procedure rules or family procedure rules, practice directions, 
as stated on the justice website. So it's just more in keeping with how the courts wish to have documents put before them. And I think you can see here, it's a lot more tidier. So one final tip that I want to give you is you can see on this document how the paragraph is lined up nicely on the right side and nicely on the left. So if you're wanting to create that, which is a suggestion, all you need to do to make that happen is you would either highlight the text in the paragraph and click this button here, which says justify text. Because you can see if I left justify it, it's not as tidy on the end. So we want to justify it to make it tidy. Or as you start typing, you can make sure that the button's typed. And then as you go on to type, it will automatically make everything nice and tidy for you. So I hope that makes sense for litigants in persons. I hope this video is not too long. So just to recap, and if you want to write this down with um, pen and paper, please do. I will actually add it in the description box, the main points to take from this, which is the font is either Arial, Georgia or Times New, um, Times New Roman. The font size definitely has to be 12. That is the preferred font size for courts. You want your spacing to be 1.5 and you want your paragraphs to be justified text. The front heading here is always in bold. You want to list what the document is, what hearing it is, who it's before, what time, what date and what the document is before the judge, which in this case is a witness statement. And then to break your witness statement up, you want background of either previous proceedings or background of the main issues, main issues before the court today, list them out, make sure you're saying what you wish to have from the court, what order you wish to be made today, and then finish your statement off with a statement of truth, name, wet signature, and the date there down at the bottom. Make three copies of this, copy for yourself, copy for the judge, copy for the respondent if you're serving in paper. Bundles need to be given three days before a court hearing, so you need to make sure this document is given three days maximum, um, three working days before your court hearing. And this is your witness statement there for you to have. So do save it as a template. Um, so I, I hope you have felt this helpful. As always, it's I don't edit this. I just do it accordingly. And um, I just hope it is very useful to someone who's acting as a litigant in person. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch. Please share. If you have any questions, you can reach out to the website, which is in the link down below. And thank you so much for taking the time to be part of this. Knowledge is power. When we know what they know, we can have a fair shot at having a good hearing that is fair, rational, unbiased, respecting our Article 6 rights. I'm Sean. This is the Access to Justice for Families Foundation. And this has been a pleasure to show you how to do a witness statement in accordance to the civil procedure rules. Take care. God bless. Stay safe.